Hello. Hello. My name is Cameron. I'm one of the junior doctors in this department. Uh, may I confirm your name, please? My name is Zeno. Nice to see you, Zeno. Zeno, I understand that you're here for the examination of your eighth cranial nerve or the vestibular cochlear nerve. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay, great. Uh, so during this examination, I'll be coming close to you and be touching you as well. I'll also be looking inside your ears. If you feel any discomfort or pain at any time and point, please let me know and I'll stop right there. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start off with looking inside your ears, all right? All right. I cannot appreciate any discharge, redness, swelling, scar marks, sinuses, or mastoid bruising in either of the ears of my patient. Thank you very much. Can you please come a bit forward? Yes. I'd now be uh, gently touching my hand on your ear to mm -hmm. check for temperature. All right. All right, so there's no localized rise in temperature of either ears of my patient. I now be touching gently on your ears, uh, pressing, pressing on them. Let me know if you feel any pain. Do you have any pain anywhere? No. Okay, great. So my patient does not have any tenderness on palpation. I would now be doing a Traeger's test on you. Let me know if you feel any pain. Okay, so the tragus test is also negative in my patient. At this time, I would ideally like to do otoscopy on my patient and also do whole pike and caloric testing. Okay, great. So I'm going to move my finger in front of your eyes now. Please look at my finger without moving your head. I'm going to quickly move that, all right? Okay, that's great. So there's no horizontal or vertical nystagmus in my patient. So, I'll rub my hands in your ears, okay? Do you hear them? Yes. Okay. Can you please close your eyes now? Which side do you hear them now? On the right side. Which side do you hear them now? On the left side. Okay, that's great. Can you open your eyes now? Great. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to perform two special tests, and I'm only going to use either the 512 or the 256 tuning fork. Uh, so this is a tuning fork, and uh, this feels like this, okay. and sounds like this, alright? Right. So, just let me know which side do you hear better. Do you hear it more on the back, or do you hear more on the front, alright? All right. So, the Rini test. I hear more at the front. You hear more at the front. I hear more at the front. You hear more at the front. All right. So now I'm going to perform another test called the Weber's test, and I'm going to place it in on your forehead. All right. Please let me know which side do you hear more. All right. Okay. I hear more on the right side. So you hear more on the right side. So most likely, my patient has sensory neural deafness on the opposite ear. I'll be explaining how these tests are done in detail at the end of this video. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Zeneb. Now I'll be performing a couple of tests which will require you to stand up, all right? All right. All right, Zeneb. No. Thank you very much. So now I'm going to ask you to perform a couple of tests. Okay. okay, so the first test that we're going to perform on you is the Romberg test. Okay. okay? Uh, now what I'll ask you to do is to look at a point straight ahead of you, okay. all right? Put your hands in the front like that, all right? And now close your eyes, I'll be supporting you by the side, all right? Okay, that's fine. Okay, you can relax now. So Romberg test is positive in my patient, so I would not go ahead and perform the marching test. All right, can you walk a bit for me? Okay. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. The gait is antalgic in my patient, that's fine. So I would not perform a tandem walking in my patient. Thank you very much, Zeneb. And now Dr. Zeneb is going to show us uh, how a sensory neural deafness is going to present. All right, Dr. Zeneb, can you please show us how a sensory neural deafness will present on the right side? Okay. All right. 
So this is a tuning fork and it hears like this, it feels like this and sounds like this. Alright? All right. Let me know where you hear more, whether the front or the back. I hear more at the front. Okay. I hear more at the front. Okay, so you hear more on the front on Reni test. So this is a Reni positive which is basically that both of them are normal at the time being. All right, so I'm going to uh, do a Weber test now, all right? Please let me know where you hear more. I hear more on the left side. So you hear more on the left side. We've seen that Dr. Zeneb has presented with a sensory neural deafness on the right side. The Rennie test was positive, which actually means that the Reni test was normal uh, in both the ears and the Weber test has lateralized towards the opposite side. So the Weber test lateralized towards the left side and she's got sensory neural deafness on the right side. So this is, the, uh, this is how you diagnose a sensory neural deafness and conductive deafness. I hope that this has helped. Another thing that I would like to tell you about is the tests that we did at the very end. So Dr. Zeneb gave me a positive Romberg test in which I asked her to put her hands on the chest and look at a point straight ahead and close her eyes in which she fell towards one side. So that's a positive Romberg test. If a patient keeps on standing like this and doesn't fall, we test it further by asking the patient to do a marching test. In a marching test, we ask the patient to straighten out the hands uh, and start marching like you would march. And after this, you ask the patient to close the eyes. And after the patient has closed the eyes, he will start moving towards one side. And this is a positive marching test. Make sure that your hands are around the patient somewhere to catch him if he or she falls. So this is a marching test. So if the Romberg test is positive, you wouldn't go ahead performing the marching test, but you would perform the marching test if the Romberg was not positive. Same with the next. So Dr. Zeneb gave me a positive for gait. So she had an antalgic gait and it was not normal and hence I did not proceed to tandem walking. So that's another test. So if Dr. Zeneb uh, gave me a normal gait and she walked normally, what I would have asked her to do would be called tandem walking. In tandem walking, what we do is we ask the patient to walk with the heels touching the toes of uh, the other foot and walk in a straight line like this. So heels touching the toes and what walking in a straight line and the patient with a sensory neural deafness would definitely fall over or would not be able to do this. So basically these are the four tests Romberg, marching, gait, tandem walking. If Romberg is positive then we do not do marching. If it is negative, then we do marking, uh, marching. Then we do gait. If gait is negative, then we move on to tandem walking. If gait is positive, as in antalgic, then we do not perform the tandem walking test. I hope you have enjoyed mine and Dr. Zenob's video and learned from it. Thank you very much.